Hello and welcome. Uh, today we're looking at numerical six on Kenot cycle. We say an ID engine operates on the Kenot cycle using a perfect gas as the working flow. The ratio of the greatest to the least volume is fixed and is S ratio one. Let's see this way. The ratio of the greatest to the least volume. All right, to look at your PV diagram, to look at your PV diagram, the, the greatest volume here is V4, while the least volume here is V2. So what they are trying to say here, the ratio of V2 to V, uh, the, the ratio of V4 over V2 is nothing but what? X over one. So we are going to say V4 all over V2 is equal to S. But we know S ratio one is S. All right. So now the temperature, the lower temperature is also fixed, but the volume compression ratio, which is denoted by R of the reversible adiabatic compression is variable. And I said, the ratio of the specific heat is gamma. Of course, we are given gamma to be the specific heat. Now, let's fix this. Said lower temperature is also fixed for the volume compression ratio. All right. Compression ratio is, not, is nothing but the ratio of V1 over V2. So, V1 all over V2 is nothing but what? Gamma. It's nothing but what? R rather. R. All right. So that is our R. So now they said we should, they gave us gamma as a specific heat. They said we should show that if the work done in the cycle is a maximum, then this relation is equal to zero. So for us to solve this, of course, we need to uh, draw our PV and our TS diagram. Of course, they are trying to, you can see, they give us the ratio of the greatest to the least volume is this. And of course, they say it is X ratio 1. So you will get that on your PV diagram. And you have been following us from this lecture, from the introduction, you should be able to draw this. I've already shown us how to draw this. All right, let's go with the question now. So we said V4 over V2 is equals to S. And then V1 over V2 is equals to what? R. All right, do we agree with me as well? If I, if I take uh, from this diagram, we've already proven from our introduction class that uh, V3, that is the relation of volume, V3 all over V2 is going to be equal to V4 all over V1, all over V1. All right. And I can further modify this to be equals to is it equals to V4 all over V2 multiplied by V2 all over what? V1. And you will agree with me that V4 over V2 is already given to us to be what? S. So we replace what is here. You can say that this is going to be equal to S multiplied by, and don't forget here we have V1 over V2, but here we have V2 over V1. So V2 over V1 will be equal to the reciprocal of what is here. Is going to be one over what r, which will be equal to s over r. So we can say that v3 all over v2, which is equal to v4 all over v1, they are equal to what? They are equal to x over r. All right. So that is what we have. Now they said we should show that if work done in the cycle is a mag is a maximum. All right, so we are going to look for work done, work done this cycle, but we already know that our work done is denoted by W, which is equal to, that is, that is heat supply minus heat rejected, minus heat rejected. And we know that this, our W can be written as, we know the formula for our heat supply. Heat supply is nothing but what? It's nothing but ROT, no, our heat supply is found between the temperature of what? Two and what? Three. So it's going to be ROT, lean, uh, sorry, ROT 
it can be C2 and it can also be what? It can also be what? C3 because we know from our TS diagram that C2 is equal to what? C3 because it is a constant temperature. And we know that C1 is equal to what? C4 because it is a constant temperature. So here, I'll just be using C2 into lean of, into lean of what? Into lean of V3 over what? V2. Lean of V3 all over what? V2. Minus our uh, heat uh, rejected. This ROT, right? Our heat rejected is found between C1 and C4. So we take C1 into what? Uh, into lean of, at this lean of, lean of what? Lean of V4 over what? V1. So it's going to be V4 all over what? V1. All right. We already know that V3 over V2. Look at it. V3 over V2. Sorry, okay, look at it. V3 over V2 is equal to V4 over V1. Everything is equal to what? X over R. So we have V3 over V2 here. It's going to be X over R. We have V4 over V1 here. It's going to be what? X over R. So we can say that our W will be written as RT2 lean of what? Lean of X over R minus ROT1, then lean of what? Lean of X over R. All right, we can factor out lean of X over R and what? And R. So if we do that, our R, our W, which is our work done, will be equal to R into what? C2 minus C1 into lean of <clears throat> X over R. All right, so that is what we are going to have. All right, so now, or uh, also continue with this uh, <clears throat> equation. We want to derive what is here. First thing we are going to do is that uh, we are going to factor out T1 from here. So by factor out T1, my W will be equal to ROT1 into, that will be left with C2 all over T1 minus 1, then lean of what? Lean of X over R. All right. Now, we are going to recall carefully from the relation between temperature and volume, we know that our C2 all over C1 is equal to V1 all over what V2 all to the power of what gamma minus one. And we already know that V1 over V2 is nothing but what? It's nothing but what? Nothing but R. So here is going to be equal to R to the power of gamma minus one. But our R is a what? That is compression ratio. Don't forget that. All right, now, so we are going to replace our T1 over T2 with what? Gamma to the power of what? Uh, sorry, R to the power of gamma minus 1. So W will be equal to ROT1, ROT1 into this R to the power of gamma minus 1, then minus 1, then close your bracket, then we have lean of X over R. All right, so that is what? We are going to have all right so now the next thing is we can therefore differentiate now because uh they say we should show that if the work done is maximum then this is equal to this so for work done to be maximum we are going to differentiate our work done in respect to what compression ratio so if we do that uh let me clean this side so we continue our differentiation all right so from this side All right, so let's continue. Now, I'm going to differentiate our work done now. To differentiate our work done, in respect to the R, what are we going to have? So we are going to differentiate. Let's keep ROT1 constant. So if I keep ROT1 constant, and I open a big bracket, so I'm going to differentiate this and this using product rule. You know how to differentiate using product rule. You have Y equals to UV. You know, the y ds is going to be equal to what? U dv ds plus what? V, uh, v du ds. That is, we are going to differentiate this, then multiply it by this. Differentiate this, then multiply by this. So if we differentiate this in respect to r, it's going to be gamma minus 1 multiplied by what? Sorry, uh, yes, gamma minus 1 multiplied by the subtraction we have r to the power of what? Gamma minus 2. Then you know, to differentiate 1, we have 0. So we are going to have 
here we are going to have gamma minus one, then into into r to the power of gamma minus two. All right, we use it to multiply this, then we are going to have lean of what? Lean of x over r. Then plus plus plus. Now, if we differentiate lean x over r, we already know how to differentiate lean. Then we have lean, then u, the differentiation is u prime all over what u. So if you, u prime will be equal to, u will be equal to everything here, x over r. u is equal to x over r. Now, of course, we know we can rewrite this as x to the power of uh, r minus one. So u prime is going to be equal to minus x, then r to the power of minus one. So we said for log, it is u prime over u. So we are going to have minus x to the power of r minus two, all over what? x to the power of what? r minus one. Because we said u prime over u. All right. So now if we do this, s will go with this. And uh, this one will become will equal to minus r to the power of minus two plus one, which will be equal to minus r to the power of minus one, which is minus one over r. So if we differentiate uh, lean of x over half, we are going to have minus one over half. Of course, I don't want to write it directly. I want you to understand it. All right, so we are going to have minus minus one over r. So we differentiate, we use it to multiply what we have here. We are going to have gamma r to the power of gamma minus one minus one. Then we close our bracket. All right, so if we close this bracket. Now, the next thing is our the w over the r will be equal to zero since it is what maximum. All right, so it's going to be zero equal to r t one, then into. So here I'm going to have this as a, I'm going to have this as gamma minus one, then r to the power of gamma minus two, then lean of x over r plus. Sorry, let me uh, clear this bracket. Minus one over r multiplied by this. I'm going to have it as a minus r to the power of gamma minus two. I hope you understand. Because r to the power of minus one times this will give us minus two over r is going to be gamma minus one minus one from indices. So we are going to have this. So we multiply this by this, we are going to get plus one over r. Then we close our bracket. All right, if we divide two by r t one, we divide two by r t one, r t one, this we go with this r t one. Then zero divided by r t one will get zero. So zero will be equal to gamma minus one. So we'll have r to the power of gamma minus two, then lean of x over r, then minus r to the power of what? Gamma minus two plus one over what r? All right. So let me clean this term. So the next thing we are going to do is we are going to factor out r to the power of gamma minus two. R to the power of gamma minus two. So if we factor it out. What are we going to have? We are going to have zero to be equal to r to the power of gamma minus two. Then we are going to be left with what? You are going to be left with gamma minus one. Then lean of what? Lean of x over r. We put this in bracket. Then I'll bring out this. So I'll be left with minus one here. Then plus, don't forget that this one does not have uh, r to the power of gamma minus one. So it's going to be at the denominator here. So we are going to have one all over r to the power of gamma minus two. Then multiply by r. So if we do this, we close the bracket. So as if we clear the bracket by this, this we cancel out, then we'll get back one over r. All right. So now the next thing we are going to do is this. So we are going to say, we are going to divide both sides again by r to the power of gamma minus two, r to the power of gamma minus two. So this, we go with this. Then zero divided by r to the power of gamma minus two is what? Zero. So we are going to get zero to be equals to gamma minus one, then lean of x over r, then minus one plus what? 
Now this one is going to be minus two plus that is gamma minus two plus one. Minus two plus one is minus one. So we are going to get one all over r to the power of gamma minus one. All right, if you look at this equation here and this equation, they are almost the same, but let's just rearrange it. All right, so let's let's write this first. We're going to have gamma minus one, then bin of what? Bin of x all over r, then plus one all over what? R to the power of gamma minus one, minus one equals to zero. So which is true? Which is true? So this is the proof. So I believe you've learned something out of this. So please don't forget to share with your friend who might be in need of this. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. If this is your first time coming across our content, because we are going to be giving it to you back to back on thermodynamics and internal combustion and strength of material, the electrical machine, and, and so on and so forth. Stay tuned. Thanks.